reverend fathers, venerable sisters, dear Catholic friends, we have heard two lectures today in the morning. Father Dominic and Father Benedict have given us very informative talks about principles of our holy faith. I want to do something different. I want to share with you a story, a story of my own person. It's not very humble to speak about yourself. That's true. But I offered His Excellency and Father Benedict two topics, and they said I should select this one, so I'm simply obedient. <laughs> but finally, it's not a story about myself. It's a story about how I have interpreted the influence of our lady in my life. It's finally about her and not me. And uh, first of all, I want to say that sometimes we make the experience, the older we become, the more we do understand what has happened years or decades later. You see, my beard is gray. I'm not in the, my 20s. A little bit older. It's a secret. I don't tell you how old I am. But finally, I have made an analogical experience last year. Possibly it was a long line. I don't know. But I understood last year something has happened more than three and a half decades before. In order to give you a chance to understand what I want to say, I have to share with you my life story, at least a little bit. My, I'm ethnically German, and my parents, the ancestors, they moved in the second half of the 18th century from southwest Germany. They came as settlers to an area is in, was in that time a Russian empire, and it's in present time an independent state of Ukraine. And they came there, they have had villages, completely German villages. One was 100% Catholic village. The other one was 100% Lutheran. The third one, Baptists, and so on and so on. And um, when the World War II started, the German army, Wehrmacht, came to Russia. Or oh, it's wrong. It came to the officially to the former Soviet Union. Russia is only a part of the Soviet Union in that time. And uh, then when the front went west, uh, the German authorities took the German people with them. They called it Heim ins Reich, back to their empire or to, the, to, the, to Germany. Yeah? But the Red Army was faster than the horse cars of people, and the so-called Russians, or better to say the Soviets, they told, no, no, you belong to our country. And they have expelled them by force, not to the old villages in southern Ukraine today, but to the Asian part of the huge Soviet Union. My mother came to the Ural Mountains, is geographically, geographically uh, the border between Asia and Europe, and my father came to central Kazakhstan. And then finally, they met each other, and I'm one of their children. And I was born in, in the desert of Kazakhstan in the city called Karaganda. It's a Kazakh name. It means black stone, coal. 
there were coal mines, and my father has worked 29 years underground in a coal mine as electrician. And I was born there, and it was a time of persecution. Uh, many of the Germans of Polish, some Lithuanian, some Ukrainian people were also expelled to this Asian part. But when the Germans got the right to travel free inside of the country, they have heard in Karaganda, this is a very special city. There are many Germans, statistically said, and there were Catholic priests. They were also expelled to this place to work in working camps. Who was younger has worked, he was imprisoned because they were priests and they were imprisoned. Then later, when they worked daytime, in the evening, in the late evening, in the night, they have conferred us the Holy Sacraments. So I went to the first Holy Communion in summer 1973. It was a top secret action. Uh, the Mass started on Sunday, 5 o'clock. So we did want to finish before the other people arise on Sunday. Usually people sleep longer. And they did not use to go to the church in Soviet Union, time of persecution. And we had Mass only three, uh, two, three to four times per year. And I remember as priests came and we had a concrete priest, Father Ladislaus Bukowinski, as the name says, he was Polish from the diocese Krakow. And he became then pastor in western Ukraine, and the Soviets sent him to Kazakhstan, and in the county of Karaganda, he has spent at his third time, when he got imprisoned, 10 years in a working camp. After he got released, he stayed in the city. He got the... Uh, he was invited by the authorities. They, they were interested to kick him out from the city. They said, you are Polish. Go to Poland. We don't need you here. And he said, no, no. In Poland, there are more than sufficient priests. Here, I am needed here. And I owe him so much. I cannot express <clears throat> and by the year <clears throat> by the year 1977 we had secretly masses and uh, then in 1977 uh, there was another priest a Lithuanian Jesuit father he has introduced the Novus Ordo Mass and I was for six years so I was baptized and uh, led to the first Holy Communion according to the true Mass. The Iron Curtain has not allowed, the, the uh, changes has came in. It's interesting and amazing how the communist system has helped us to save the faith. Unbelievable. God's providence is thanks to communists regarding this. <laughs> And then um, we had met this priest. He was, as he said, very obedient to the Holy Father. As he said, you understand what I want to say. He has introduced a, a new mass, a new sacraments, but he celebrated it by a, a very pious way. So I was six years long a mass server in the Novus Ordo Mass. I knew it well enough. And, but we had no hand communion, no women distributing the Holy Communion, but there were some change, changes he has introduced. 
But okay, let's go farther. And uh, <clears throat> then, as teenager, I was born, I have to say you how old I am, if you can count. I was born in 1965. And then when I was 15, I, something has happened. I have made a very special experience uh, in my faith. And the first time I had the thought, what's about priesthood? Is that something for you? And then it was several, uh, in a period of several years, it was a process. It was a question, what is attracting you more? Family, marriage, I am a very normal man, or priesthood. And you see how I have decided and finally. <laughs> <clears throat> but our big dream was to return to Germany, to the country of our fathers. Not just because we were thinking there we would have a better life. It's true in some regards, it's economically much better in Germany than in the former Soviet Union or today in Kazakhstan. It's Kazakhstan. Karaganda is today Kazakhstan, independent state. But our interest was, and my private interest was, I was thinking in Germany everybody goes to a church and there you can become a better a priest. Then finally, a few years later, I decided I will try to become a priest. And my parents applied nine times during nine years, but the Soviet authorities said, net, no. My parents were workers, a simple family, and they didn't give a permission. And then in uh, March 1983, I became 18. You know, men know what for the age is good, for military service. And then in April, May, I was called to, to do my duty for the country. It was not my mother country, but nevertheless, I was a citizen of Soviet Union. And then, in the meantime, I had the dream, we come to Germany, and every time I was expecting the responses from the, of the authorities, possibly this time we get the permission. But nine times, no. And then, God's providence, I went through the medical check in the military, and I have suffered, of, I had a chronic hepatitis for four years. And I was also thinking, why am I suffering this? Other people, they come to the hospital three weeks later, they were released and healed, me not. But then I understood, this has helped me to avoid Soviet army because I was simply sick for uh, the service in the military. And again, a topic, a question for God's providence. Let us not complain too loudly sometimes. We do, we used to do. Why has this happened? Years later, you will understand. God will show you. I understood this lecture God's providence has given me. But then, when my parents came the tenth time, in summer 1983, they understood we have to do something, then else when our son becomes a soldier, we can forget Germany. We didn't know, we didn't know that Mikhail Gorbachev will come and start with changes. We didn't know in 1983, and we were extremely surprised when it has happened, this process. And then I lost my hope. I said, Forget it. It will not work. Nine times they said, no, why should it happen now and work at the tenth attempt? And in my heart, I agreed to stay in the Soviet Union. I had no more hope. I said, no, no, I stay here. 
I accept. It's against my dream and my desire, but I do accept. And then I had a day, it was not an apparition, it was nothing special, but I was a young boy of 18 years, and I have just in thoughts said a short sentence. I addressed it to our blessed uh, mother, the Holy Virgin Mary, and I told them, Dear Mother of God, I agree to stay in Soviet Union. But please help me to become a priest if it's God's will. And then the day has approached and my parents got invitation to go to the special office of the internal forces of Soviet Union. They came home, they smiled, they laughed. We got permission. We came to Germany in August 1983 and we have been confronted with the changes in the church. We are more, as they used to say, progressed. The same new mass, but in a way we got a shock. It was not more pious. Hand communion, the first time I saw it in Germany, the priest was sitting and observing the people. They came to receive what they call communion. And um, our family, all of us, we became a shock. How can you deal with that by this way? And before that, my dear cousin, they came two years earlier to Germany. And then we asked them, how is it in the church? And then once, months later, he told, he wrote us, it's not good. And I said, I said, you are traditive. You do not follow the Holy Father. So I was instructed. I didn't know the difference between the new mass and the old mass. I have been present at when our old priest have said the Latin mass. But I didn't know what can you expect from a child. And then we came in touch with this problem, personally, concretely. But uh, thanks to my dear cousin, he had connection with the former father, Günther Stork, who became then later Bishop Günther Stork, consecrated bishop in April 1984 by Monsignor um, um, uh, de, uh, de Laurie, Gerard de Laurie in France. And he is, by the way, also consecrated and two years later, Bishop McKenna. <coughs> And then um, I came in touch with him. And after I completed my studies in the school, I graduated. I joined his private seminary. He has run in Munich. Uh, Bishop Stork was a, a doctor of theology in, on the University of Munich. And he was conservative, traditional Catholic bishop. And then later, uh, step by step, I understood it was then, it went then automatically. I understood and studied and I said, yes, the tradition is the truth and the novus order, this is a big lie. And uh, then, um, yeah, I became, ordained, I got ordained priest then several years later. And I started to work under the episcopacy of Bishop Stork, who died then in April 1993. Uh, and then I met in summer 1995 His Excellency Bishop Mark Pivarunas. And this is a very funny story. Possibly he can tell it you what I told him first when I met him. I asked him, who are you? <laughs> okay, then he called his name and I kissed his ring. And since that time I'm related to the Simarai, although I'm not a member of the Simarai, formally said. But now I make a change. I jump 
into the present time, in last year. Our Blessed Virgin has obviously provided that we came to Germany. I said, okay, I accept to stay there. And then suddenly we got permission. We came to Germany. Okay, the life continued, and you know. And then last year, during the time, many times people have asked me, Father, have you ever been there again in the city you were born? I said, no, there are no relatives. What, what should I do there? But then last year in spring I thought, but why not? Let me go there, just refreshing my memories, childhood, youth. And I did it, and I'm very happy that I have done this. I went last year in September to Karaganda, and uh, it was a wonderful trip. People were very friendly, and uh, after my landing and breakfast in the hotel, I went to my old school, and they have treated me as a small superstar. They were simply happy that a former student visits the, his old, old school. 36 years after my graduation in this school and 35 years after we left the country. Statistically said, it's about the half life. So I was in uh, Karaganda, I walked I visited all the places I knew from my childhood. And then I went also to our old church. It's on the other end of the city. First of all, I went to the grace of our priests. Some of them I knew. And the best I could do, what Father Benedict has explained, I prayed the divine office, the official prayer of the church. Because I said, Dear fathers, you did exactly the same. This is church. I prayed then, and then on next day, I learned to know that the grave of Father Ladislaus Bukowinski is not there, but on the newly, in the newly born, uh, built cathedral. They built in 2011-12 uh, a Gothic cathedral, a beautiful one, but they say, new mass there. And in the crypt, they have in the table, Novus Orda, so-called altar, the relics of Father Bukowinski. And he got beatified by the Novus Orda Church about three years ago. We do not recognize this act because not the legal authority has done it. But nevertheless, I do venerate him very much. And it was for me a desire to go there and to pray there. I got the main key of the church, of the entire building. I met a man, he worked in the office, and I was so surprised, he did exactly know who I am. I left the country 35 years ago, last year. I met him first time in my life, and he me too. And he knew that I'm saying the traditional Latin Mass. He asked me the question. It would be a too long story to tell you. It doesn't matter. He knew. But then he showed me later in his office the pictures from my priestly ordination. But I know this uh, Jesuit father was occasionally present on the day of my ordination, and his hob hobby was photography. <laughs> That's also my hobby. And then I prayed there about half hour. I was alone in the crypt. I had something to express to the priest who has baptized me. And then I went up to the office. I had to check in for my returnal flight. I couldn't do it by my smartphone. I had to go to a PC. So I went to the office. Some people came, a nun came. She saw me. She said, yes, she's in about my age. 
she has immediately recognized me. She said, yeah, that's him, that's him. I remember him when he was mass old, uh, altar boy, no? of course. No? Everybody saw me, too. We were many, a big group of, uh, of mass servers, too. And then <clears throat> another lady came, a lay person. She worked in the church. I think she was a cook there. And then um, she asked me about my sister, and then we had a small talk. And then I was sitting on the computer checking in. Then she asked me a question. And this is what about I want to tell you. This was the main, most important question. She said, Father, do you not want to return and to be here a priest? She, di she didn't know who I was and am. She didn't know the background, you know, that I am a traditional Catholic priest. And the good lady asked me, do you not want to return and working here, staying here as priest? When I heard this question, it was light, like lightning. I understood the most important was what has happened in my life. I understood in this moment, 35 years after we left, Soviet Union, that all the time when I was thinking and hoping we come to Germany and I want to become there a priest, it was my sincere interest, we got no. But when I said, okay, I agree, I do not dream more, I try to plan my future, my entire life in that country. We got the permission. But we came to Germany. And God's providence has taken care. So I met my later bishop who has ordained me. And I became priest. But I became traditional Catholic priest. With valid orders. Unworthy as we all are and I am. But the grace of God is working through us unworthy servants of God. And I understood it when she finished her question, do you want to return and work here as priest? I understood all the time when I said, no, I want, I want. That's my sincere dream, nothing wrong. But the life, the God's providence said no. But I, once in my life I have do done something was correct when I prayed to Our Lady saying, Dear Mother of God, I accept to stay here, but help me to become a priest if it's God's will. And then I understood this and I said to this lady, I couldn't explain all the story, background, but I've just told, okay, I prayed once to Our Lady that I accept, but then we got permission, and now I know one. One thing is true. I am there where I have to be. Not because of money, not because of a better life, but because Our Lady, Our Blessed uh, Virgin, uh, Our uh, Lady, uh, the Mother of God, has led me to the place where I am now in Germany. And here, too. Because I was interested to become a priest. But I became a priest. But more than only formally a priest. Many of my colleagues as mass servers, they are novus order priests. And one of them became even a bishop. He died. But I didn't know what I have to expect. Uh, but I think because... I agreed once in my life. I was given a chance to come and to gain much more than I was dreaming. Because what has happened then has opened me away the path to the true one holy Catholic apostolic church. And uh, this is often so in our life. When we are reptant and we say, why? Why has happened this? Why has happened this? 
we should, I say, more trust. We should more trust in God's providence. And uh, when we accept the cross, the negative circumstances in our life, as long as we fight and say, God, I cannot accept, we do suffer. But sometimes when we find the power, we should pray and hope and trust. When we say, I agree. I agree to my cancer disease. I try to become, to, uh, to recover, of course. But when I've experienced it on my own father, he got heart attack. And he, had, he has fought a long time, 22 years. And he has often asked, why am I sick? And I saw how he is suffering, but only when we say, yes, I agree. I do what does depend on me, but God's will be done. And this is finally the story of my life. Because once in my life, I devoted myself to her, and she is in the best, this is the best tandem in the world, Jesus and Mary. What we address to her, it's addressed to him, to Jesus Christ, to her divine son. And I understood this is the main story of my life, how God has led me through Mary to the place I am. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow in future. Nobody knows what will he or she experience in a certain number of years. But nevertheless, the illnesses, the crosses, they have also sense. They open us sometimes, but only when we say yes. As hard as it is, as it is. Only when I say, yes, I accept this cross. I do not protest. Also, only in my mind, without saying to other people. When I accept it, then God is giving us, opening us a future. He's offering us a future. And we will experience then much, much, much more than we can ever imagine. And this is what I have experienced. And often also, by time, we understand what has happened. That's why all the people are so wise. Sometimes, often, mostly. But they have experience. And this is, I have several times spoken with my friends. They said, one family, they have children, and they are in about my age, and they said, <laughs> it's funny, it's strange, but it's interesting. Exactly what we are saying today to our children, our parents have told us. Do this, do not do this. And we didn't believe. Now we understand and say how wise our parents were. This is experience, experience in life, experience also in faith. And only when we go this path, and then finally, let me tell you, this is like, imagine a big picture. I imagine now I have visited last year again in Palazzo Ducale in uh, Venice. Um, there was, when it was built, it was the biggest picture in one piece in the world. The picture of the paradise. And imagine, you are in front of the wall where the picture is. How much do you recognize? No, some colors. You don't know whom or what to do these colors belong to. Then you step backwards a few feet. You say, oh, it's a person. It was the arm or the fo foot of a person. Then you uh, step backwards, uh, let me tell, 20 feet. You say, oh, it's, it's, it's about you know, 
saint. Uh, this is a saint. This is, but you do see, uh, still not view all picture. You do not know what the picture, what the painter, the artist did want to express. Then you step backwards, possibly 100 or 200 feet. You say, wow. Now it's paradise, the picture of the paradise. Jesus Christ in the center, God Father, the Holy Spirit, the saints, all this. Step backwards. So analogically it's in our life. When we step backwards and we trust and we say, yes, I trust in God's providence. If something is happening, I ha is, is not good and I have influence, I have to improve it. I have to go to the doctor when I'm sick. Don't stay at home and say, oh, I do pray only. Go to the doctor. God gave us the intellect and the doctors. The medicine has made progress. Yeah? But do trust. This is the uh, basics. These are the basics. And only then when we go this way, when we uh, trust in God's providence, then things will happen you, we do not understand at the moment, but later, later we say, wow, wow, how God has led me. How my short, small, uh, simple prayer of a completely uninteresting person, um, 18 years young boy, has helped him to find what he can call today the biggest prize in his life. And on this place, I think I have a little bit time. I can give you some information. It's possibly for you Americans uh, very interesting to hear what was going on. And I want to tell you about our priests in the Soviet Union in Karaganda. Father, uh, Father Ladislaus Bukovinsky has baptized me and led to the First Holy Communion. He uh, was released in 1955 from the working camp in Karaganda. And you can imagine in the working camp, in the prison, there are no newspapers, no radio. In that time, internet, they didn't know what it is. So they have simply no information. They have simply worked. And I have a picture with me on the USB stick. and. Uh, when you see, when he was released, he was skin and bones. Skin and bones. And he was born in 1904, and he died in 1974. And when he was released, he didn't know, are he here Catholics or not? What should I do? Where should I go to? I'm now free, I have no money, I have nothing. And can you imagine how clever he was? I would never come to this idea. He went to the cemetery. He did want to find out, are in this city Catholics or not? He went to the cemetery and he has observed the processions of the people when they came for funeral. And on the second or third day, he saw a group and they were praying. It was permitted. It was permitted in cemeteries to sing, to pray. But because it was in cemetery and a person died, the Soviet system did tolerate this. And then he saw a group, they prayed, and he approached them and he said, oh, you, you, you look to be Catholics. I'm a Catholic priest. Can you imagine what was their first reaction? <laughs> Possibly he's an agent, KGB <laughs> agent. Persecution time. It was very realistic for them. They didn't know who this man is. Everybody can tell stories. But I think and I imagine that a priest knows how to show and to prove that he's a priest. He has simply to say, to respond, to pray some prayers from the Mass. Then they believed him, and so he started to work. And then he 
I have already mentioned to you, he has not accepted to go to Poland. He stayed there. And there were some other priests. I was, for instance, uh, I received the sacrament of confirmation by a, from a priest, not from a bishop, but a Byzantine Rite priest, Ukrainian Catholic priest. We call them Greek Catholic. And he, they have the permission on the regular basis to uh, confer the sacrament of confirmation. I have dark remembrance. I was about nine, ten years young in that time. And Father um, uh, Bukavinsky was a very poor man, and he became sick. And uh, this cassock was made by my mother. Uh, she is uh, an artist. <laughs> She's a dressmaker, or how do you call she sews, sewer, yeah, you know, you understand. I'm sorry, it's penance for you to hear my English. <laughs> but I'm happy I do abbreviate your time in purgatory a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> by your penance. Um, and she has made uh, trousers for him. And uh, he came to us, and it was a real procedure. He came, uh, I remember, first we had two rooms, apartment, five people, our family. Grandma, parents, and my younger sister. And then he heard first in one room confession, confessions. Some relatives came, top secret, do not say anybody, entered the house, the apartment, Nobody must know. It has taken time. It was a long story. When the people have no regular uh, chance to go to confession. And he was, he was strong. And he was strict. And he has accused all girls came with short skirts. It was moot in Soviet Union. But then he said the mass, and after the mass, he, my father has, he has eaten alone. And then only my father was permitted to have a talk with him. My father prepared all the newspapers, and then he came after the meal and he has spoken with father. A man's group, man's congregation. We children and women, my mother, grandma, were, they were not permitted to go there. In any case, he has spoken, then he got asleep. He spent the night in our apartment. And my little sister, she was two, three years in that time, she said, she didn't understand why she has no right to go to her uh, beloved bed. And uh, next morning he disappeared. And once my father told a funny story, it was not in our house, it was in another location, in everybody's apartment or house. And my father entered for the confession. And it has taken time and time and time. He has not come out. The people became nervous. <laughs> what have they to talk so long there? Then finally he came out. One cousin of him became angry and she said, Have you so many sins to confess? We are waiting. And he said, No, I completed my confession quickly. But what have you done? The father has asked me questions about football. It was the only occasion to talk with him about what he had a hard life. And he enjoyed such situations where he could ask a question. Do you believe that we priests are human beings? <laughs> human beings and nothing else. And <laughs> in 1974, the World Cup of football, or you call it soccer, uh, you poor Americans, you don't know what <laughs> true football is. <laughs> I'm a fan of Bavaria Munich. 
Okay, in any case, uh, he was also a fan of football. And in 1974, in summertime, the World Cup has taken place in Germany. In Munich was the final, and Germany won the cup. A Polish team became third. It was an extreme success, and he was happy <laughs> to find a young man who can tell him, explain him about the scores of football, about this and that, about politics and so on, because he had a very hard life. So be not surprised when you see us priests uh, having some entertainment or enjoy, enjoying the life on a good on a good way yeah you know and um yeah this is in short the story of my life i did want to share with you and possibly it was very wise from his excellency and father benedict to tell me speak about your own life experience about this story there's a good alternation uh, possibly in this fatima conference now and at the end, I do want to express my gratitude for invitation to the CMRI, to all people here. You gave me a chance again to be a priest. It's the best what a priest can do, to be a priest. And then also my thanks to Father Johannes Heine, my younger confrater in Germany, because he is replacing me next Sunday. He says the Mass on my place, in my chapel, for so-called my people, for our people. Many thanks to him, so I'm here. And please pray for us and try to trust in God's providence. Do not rebel against the crosses. And do try to say, I don't understand why, but God will show me later why. And I do say sometimes to my friends, you know, now we don't understand. Possibly we will, by the death here on earth, not understand why this or that has happened. But when we meet on the right place in eternity, on the right place, we will view backwards and we will say how stupid we were. How stupid we were. And then I promise you, we will meet them, and I invite you then for a glass of Riesling wine. <laughs> and then we enjoy the eternity, hopefully. Thank you very much.